What's this? Something on this channel that's not a video game review. Yes, uh, I'm going to get back into the rhythm of actually making proper videos on this channel again. Uh, so before I crack on with today's highly controversial topic, uh, feel free to shoot me any video ideas in the uh, Fediverse. That's usually the best place you can catch me, chrisware at linuxrocks.online. Or uh, I suppose you can email me, chrisware at postio.net. Um, or, of course, comments in the video and all that business as well. Um, but yeah, um, I haven't made videos for a while. The last one, I think, was just reflecting on Debian. A lot of the videos coming over were just uh, open source uh, game reviews from the old gaming channel. But uh, I actually enjoyed watching over them as well. Actually, uh, some of them are new as well. But uh, today, uh, I want to get back into the rhythm of talking about Linux. There's been a lot of interesting news about Linux that I've missed the boat on. And I'm going to cover one of those topics today. That topic mainly being... Um, what's the best distribution to start Linux on? What's the best flavor of Linux to start on? What is the best Linux operating system to start on? Uh, of course, I'm talking about desktop Linux. I'm talking about GNU slash Linux for those of you that want to be uh, specifically correct. Um, and I do have an answer for this. It's Linux Mint. Um, Linux Mint was the first distribution that made me feel like Linux was was home. So I've got a very personal attachment to that. I tried Fedora, I tried Ubuntu, and I think Linux Mint was maybe my third uh, one in recent years, right? I tried SUSE back in like 1997 and all that kind of stuff, and, and that was more just playing around with it. But actually, when it came to using it as a full-time distro, Linux Mint was the one that I, I settled on. And I settled on it for different reasons that aren't really applicable today, usually like sort of around codecs, basically. Um, and for someone that didn't really understand what codecs were at the time, or like, how to get them or the legality behind them all linux mint just kind of cut through that and it really helped me get on the the linux ladder and, and, and sort that out also um with linux mint the community is, is i always found them to be really great uh really helpful really welcoming to people um more than happy to sort of like uh accept that people are new to linux uh, there are other distributions they almost assume a level of knowledge when it comes to Linux. Uh, I remember when I was trying out Debian uh, quite some time ago, and uh, I was a little bit more advanced with, with Linux than that one. I needed some help, and I, I, I turned to the community. And whereas the community, every single person I've, I've met who has anything to do with the Debian project has always been absolutely wonderful, lovely, and charming. There is still that, like, expect... You, you know, you're expected to know what a kernel is. You're expected to know some basic, you know, command line, you, you know, uh, commands and all that kind of stuff. Um, whereas with Linux Mint, it... it, it Again, it, 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 the community has a slightly different approach to how it, 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 it might sort of, you know, respond to queries from its members and, or users and, and that kind of thing. Um, and the reason I choose Linux Mint as well, because there are other many distributions, like Pop! OS is another one that I've heard people recommend. Um, some of the Ubuntu's are really good as well. I will say that when it comes to the Ubuntu's, um, like Ubuntu itself... I would say maybe not, and I would say that maybe not on the basis of it is a corporate, it seems to be nowadays, uh, and it's changed quite a bit over the years, but it seems nowadays to be more geared towards sort of the corporate enterprise environment. You look on, on Ubuntu.com and, and you start seeing, I mean, I don't even think they mention Linux uh, anywhere on the um, on the front page, but they do list, of course, their corporate partners like Amazon and, and the like. So... I do think that if you want something that you as an end user at home on your desktop machine, which is the sort of the use case I'm assuming here, uh, some of the community spins might be a better option for you. Ubuntu Mate, Zubuntu, Lubuntu, Kubuntu. Um, I think there's probably a few more in there that I've, I've, I've missed. I think there's a Cinnamon Edition uh, in the works, which is quite interesting. I've got Cinnamon Edition, Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition on this very machine that I'm recording uh, on today absolutely wonderful absolutely wonderful cinnamon really good desktop environment i think it might very well be my favorite um i mean i'm a little bit stuck in the world of xfce but like cinnamon here is is definitely like it's it's smooth as silk it's modern it's intuitive um and i think with things like like mate for example where it separates itself from mate and xfce is that cinnamon seems to have been built for the modern era whereas xfce and, and mate were built for yesteryear and have been patched to catch up and i think there are subtle differences subtle distinctions here um and i think with uh, like for example with cinnamon cinnamon's built around compositing as default in fact i don't even know if you can turn off compositing on it whereas with xfce and mate you know, you could switch out your, your, your window manager because that used to be like the old way of Linux. Nowadays, the sort of the newer way of Linux is to accept the desktop environment is almost almost as a whole, which is, you know, fine and simple and more straightforward and more intuitive to the hardware that we use nowadays and the users that we have nowadays as well. 
But cinema is a great desktop environment. Love it. Uh, one of the, you know, and, and again, another great reason. But the reason I would I recommend, and I have onboarded a number of people in, you know, onto Linux operating systems as non-technical users who remain non-technical users. Not everyone has to be interested in computers, but a lot of them uh, are just interested. You know, they're just fed up of, of, of Microsoft and their ways. Uh, a lot of them, uh, you know, they can't afford a Mac. Some of them are reviving old machines. Some of them, you know, like the, 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 there are all different reasons why someone might 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 come across over some, and a lot of them, you know. You might possibly recommend different distributions based on different uh, reasons for that. For example, if someone's a, like a Windows power user and they're fed up with Windows and they want something that's like, you know, very fast moving, very, very, you know, uh, up to date, then yeah, like why not put them on Arch or an Arch based distribution? I mean, if they're willing to learn and they're willing to get under the hood. But for most users, Linux Mint is, is a great jumping off point because you've got the power of Ubuntu when it comes to like a pragmatic level. Um, Ubuntu, I think, probably are the best of, of the distributions, and it's not necessarily other distributions' fault on that front. Um, it's because things seem to be packaged for Ubuntu first, and then they filter out into other distributions. So, uh, when it comes to like support, like if you look at like for example VPNs, literally just taking an example off the top of my head, and sometimes they say they support Linux, and some of them will just provide you with a .deb file. Some will go as, may may stretch to an RPM file for for Red Hat based distributions, but uh, when people sometimes when a piece of software says it supports Linux, what they often mean is they're just going to give you a .deb file, which is fine if you're on a distribution that supports it. Sometimes that means it will also work on Debian. Sometimes it will just mean it will only work on Ubuntu. .deb is not the best way to go, you know, for all intents and purposes. A lot of cases when it comes to setting up your VPN, you might want to use some open source software that's more integrated into your system, like OpenVPN. Anyway, that's what I do. I, qu I quite enjoy Open uh, VPN. I think some other people I know use like um, with Molvad. I think you can use like Wireshark or something like that as well. I'm not too familiar. I've kind of got my little VPN routine going, and I've had that for like five years now, which is just, and it's just it's just done the job for me. So I've not really kept up with the latest VPN technology. Um, but yes, um, with Linux Mint, you get the technical. Um, uh, benefits of an Ubuntu distribution or an Ubuntu based distribution but you've also got that sort of like that that more end user home user experience so you you don't have to have the the the, the corporate enterprisey kind of feel of Ubuntu uh, it's more like I, I just do not imagine these days ubuntu.com not Ubuntu, you know Ubuntu for just home users it just feels like a very corporate environment type thing um, the way that it's sold, the way that it's presented. I know that that's, uh, though I will probably get some sort of like rebuttal and pushback from that, but the actual premium, you know, the, the main Ubuntu uh, distribution, it just does, it just feels, it's just too corporate for me. Uh, and when you want to get away from the likes of Windows, when you want to want to get away from the likes of Mac, and almost everyone that I've onboarded onto Linux wants to get away from that heavily corporatized environment. They're not necessarily like burn all, co all corporations to the ground. They're not necessarily like entirely anti-corporate. But the thing is, with Windows now, it's not just Windows, it's a Windows Live account, and that onboards you with Skype and Teams and uh, Outlook and all that other stuff, and they're all trying to integrate themselves in a similar way to Google as well with I'm sure Google Chrome do it but the group you know all the Google services are integrated as well Google Drive and YouTube and um, why am I blanking on all the Google stuff um, you know sheets and the, of course there's the search and the uh, you know all the Google stuff. you know like they're basically they're trying to bring you into their their various corporate ecosystems as well and some people want to get away from that. Some people want a little bit more personal choice. Some people want something a bit more traditional. Some people have learned to work with a paradigm and they're just happy working out that paradigm. Um, so in regards to, to all of that, I think Linux Mint sort of ticks those boxes. It's a slightly less corporatized version of, of you know, the, the, the main alternatives, but it also brings with it the benefits, the technical benefits of Ubuntu. Um, and that's really about it. Uh, also, Linux Mint do have, they do lean quite heavily on stability. Uh, and that's something you really want when it comes to new users. One of the reasons I would never say put a, a non-technical user onto, say, an Arch-based distribution is because Arch, Arch does require a little bit of tinkering from, from time to time. It requires a little bit of calibration. And that's fine if you're willing to learn how to do that. But a lot of people just want to check email and maybe play a few games or whatever. And, and you know, an Ubuntu-based distribution like Linux Mint it's just going to be best for that. It's just going to uh, save the save the aggro. Also, with Linux Mint, of course, because it's built on 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 Ubuntu, it's got like a five year uh, from the beginning of its 
window it's got five years of support behind it that's really good it's, that's a solid amount you, you know a lot of people will just not need to update until it runs uh to, to its end of life which is fine uh and then by the time it runs on to year five you've already got a distribution out that's been out for a year tested and fixed and all that kind of stuff there are some things about linux mint that i'm not like too fond of but they're pretty minor i don't like i think it comes bundled with a lot of pre-installed software it's got a fine software center i think nowadays people can just install the stuff that they want if you really want to push that kind of thing um you know some pre-installed uh, apps and stuff have them as part of the welcome screen or have them as part of the first boot um type of thing a first boot introduction screen uh but for all things considered i don't think most users nowadays need LibreOffice pre-installed most people don't need an office suite and those you know and a lot of people will just go straight to google drives or straight to uh the microsoft equivalent or something like that and yeah, i'm not gonna lie google drive is pretty good for 99 percent of use cases um and then of course uh for, for more powerful power users technical users uh such as myself i just use markdown and plain text uh, for all of the the writing that i do plain text is great it cuts everything out you know exactly how, you know what your document's made of because it's just made of text it's just a plain text document you might throw in some markdown to make it more readable but it's still plain text at the end of the day uh so yeah like i don't think it's it's necessarily a given that you need nowadays need a um you know like a word processor a word processor you open a word processor it pulls out like an a4 or a letter page or letter size page very few you know like i don't see people print very much at all these days plain text markdown all that kind of stuff stuff that can actually fit into a narrow column of a phone uh, which is what people use now as an alternative to printing is much more superior anyway why people are, 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 are putting out things like pdfs and and oh, pdf pdfs now they're completely an outdated unless you're printing or using it for like vector images don't use a pdf because pdfs are fundamentally designed for printing and that's you know just just use it if like use text use text as default if you need extra stuff think about like an image file if i needed like maybe an advanced table or a map or something just draw it up in in, in gimp or in in Krita or in Inks, inkscape's really good i actually did a map uh, a couple of months ago uh, just in in inkscape inkscape's really good for that kind of stuff um but yeah uh but otherwise yeah you know like you don't need an office suite so i think and also sometimes like like linux mint's backup utilities can be like it's great but at the end of the day i also think that it's kind of maybe a little bit of an old-fashioned way to do backups uh these days i think nowadays a lot of people just work straight to the cloud a lot of people just like will put all their documents onto the google drive all that and yeah i get it like that's not necessarily fos friendly or anything like that um but again maybe that's one of those things that people should choose to opt in of instead of having it all, all pre-installed um i get that sometimes like linux mint may very well want to add in some extra oh, sorry i knocked the mic there i uh, want to add in some extra features to like make it more distinct from its its um from other distributions um but i think at the end of the day i think most people would just appreciate like a, like you install it it comes with the bare minimums to get everything up and running but you know like ubuntu, the ubuntu mint software install is really good so I, uh, yeah, that's, that's really, that's, I think that's really about it. I think the real selling point for me of Linux Mint is just the quality of the community. Um, I just, I think it's great. Um, and I, I, yeah, uh, and that's it. I don't think they necessarily, and also one of the things I do like about them, they don't rush on all the latest trends as well. They're a very reserved, somewhat conservative distribution in that regard. And that's, I highly respect that. Um, because, because in a lot of cases, things like Windows and Mac, they move too fast. Right. Sometimes people want a slower pace, a, a pace where they don't have to care too much. Um, it, it, I know people that have upgraded their Macs and they've lost the use of they've lost their 32 bit libraries. They can't play their old games. I've seen people update Windows and then the printer doesn't work anymore. Right. People don't, you know, like people don't sometimes people just want a bit of a slower pace. Right. So I think by and large now, I think I've just like made kind of made my case why I think Linux Mint is is the one. Like if you want one answer, Linux Mint, put new people onto Linux Mint. By and large, people will intuitively pick it up. It's got a similar enough paradigm to Windows, but like you know, it's not going to be Windows. They're not going to expect Windows. It's got it's got great defaults out of the box. It's got a great software installer. It's got that very 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 conservative base with a uh, with flat packs installed uh, by default on top. Now of course. I'm going to address the controversy because why not? Why not? Eh? Let's you know, let's let's wade into the mud a little bit here. Uh, people are going to disagree with this, but I think that Linux Mint were right to um, disable snaps by default. 
right? Now it is possible, it's just a one line command to actually re, um, reactivate or re-enable uh, snaps. And in fact, you can even do it through, I think you'd like, you just have to delete a file or something. If you, if you, I think there is like a GUI way of doing it. But um, I think if I recall correctly, um, there's just like one little block on, on snaps. And the reason for that is because um, snaps are a, they're, they're basically an app store in all ways, all the ways that matter. It's an app store, like the Google Play app store, like the, the Apple app store, uh, like Steam. It is a an app store. Now, it is a proprietary app store. The back end is proprietary. But because it's a centralized service, I don't even know if that truly matters, right? Um, maybe, maybe. But the thing is with, with Snaps is that it is a way to get corporate uh not corporate but proprietary software onto linux like actually i think that's that's a worthwhile endeavor so i'm not completely shitting on snaps right like they have their purpose i just believe that they should be opt-in the thing is with um some time ago uh with the chromium package um if you went into ubuntu and you went apt install chromium using the apt uh package manager it would then pull in the snap so it would completely unwittingly unknowingly to you in a snap and the snap is you know it's it is it, again it's a proprietary app store right um and i think that's something that people should be able to opt into in the same way that you'd opt into steam in the same way that you'd opt into itch as well right so again i'm not like you know i, I love itch and i quite like steam you know like it, it's great in that regard um and in the same way you know i quite like snaps i think that they're, they're, they're again they're worthwhile i don't think it's terrible all i think is that like it, it should be done as an opt-in you know it should be done you know it's end user consent that's the thing that that by and large uh should should come first so uh linux mint have decided you know along those lines uh, and it's understandable why ubuntu as a distribution would want to push snaps as well because it's their it's it's their um you know it's like it's, it's, it's a corporate thing right it's something that's going to add value to canonical as a company and of course canonical is a for-profit company why shouldn't they they develop things for, for, for profit and everything like that? The, the, you know, the beauty of open source is that we actually get to, to take this code and then, like, reuse it for our purposes as well. And, and that's great. And it makes things more, you know, it, it spreads the POSIX compatibility around as well. Um, yeah, but, you know, by and large, the end result is better than without. But that being said, Linux Mint still made the right decision. I believe other distributions... I think all other like I think Linux Mint may very well be the only distribution to do that. But yeah, they basically Linux Mint they take Ubuntu, they decorporatize it, and then they, uh, you know, and then they, they fly it out the door with the backing of their own community. And I think that that's really nice. And I think that's really really kind of a good way of of, of making use of open source code. It's very similar to to LibreWolf, right? And what LibreWolf have done is they've simply taken Firefox, they've decorporatized it, they've taken out the stuff that people have some object objections to, um, and then just released it as a, an app image, and maybe is in other ways as well, uh, possibly, or they certainly released the source code. Uh, and yeah, alongside with a, with a, uh, an app image, and it works great. Uh, and and I like that. You know, I think that's, that's great. It's not going to solve all the problems with the World Wide Web. We all know that the World Wide Web has basically been co-opted by uh by by the likes of google uh samsung amazon at this point uh maybe maybe microsoft might get a, a you know squeak in there as well uh but fundamentally speaking uh you know the world wide web has kind of become what it is um and again with all the good and bad that, that come with that as well let's let's not all you know everything is shades of gray right so so I think I've made that case. I think that I've made the case that, like, yeah, Linux Mint. Um, and the people I have put onto Linux Mint, they've never had a problem. They've literally just, they've never had a problem. Uh, they've even, they've, I've even used uh, Linux, I've used Linux Mint XFCE on a non-technical user's laptop to, to like, reinvigorate it, because they were just going to throw it out and get a new one. I said, try Linux Mint XFCE. You can basically do all your cloud computing-y stuff anyway. Give it a go and see what happens. Works every single time never had a problem um and if they have like they've managed to work it out themselves so you know I, I i can't say i've had any complaints whatsoever one issue one sticking point i have always had with linux and i know every single person who uses linux has has a single sticking point somewhere like something that always trips them up maybe it's a problem that comes up and they just hate solving it for me it's printers hate printers and i i hate 
printers on Linux. Now, I haven't used printers on any other operating system for a long time, but a lot of people are quite keen to tell me that printers just in general are shit. So, all right, I'll take that on board. Not trashing Linux, but I do, like sometimes if you catch me on Mastodon, I'll be ranting and raving about some printer problem I'm having on the very rare occasion, the two times a year I have to print something. Um, but yeah, uh, I have found on the whole printers to be best supported on Ubuntu-based distributions. I had some luck with MX Linux, which is Debian based, but not Debian itself. Sometimes, and this can be like really stupid things that trip it up that I just can't be asked to work out. Sometimes it's permissions. Sometimes it's how sudo works. Sometimes it's it's the drivers from the server, the proprietary drivers from the server it has to pull down from whatever. There's a million and one things. But my track record of getting this stuff working on uh, Ubuntu based distributions is is is, you know, 10 for 10, whereas other distributions hit and miss, including Arch. I know there are going to be people in the comments that say, ah, but printers work great on Arch for me. Printers work great on BSD for me. Wonderful, great, incredibly happy for you. Again, we all have these weird sticking points that sort of other people don't necessarily apply. I've never had a problem with Bluetooth, but I know that Hex has had tons of problems with Bluetooth, right? But he's not had problems with printers in the same way that I have, so, you know. Um, but then again, Hex probably, I think, on the whole, just as a person, is is more willing to sit down and work out a problem i think nowadays i just i just want stuff to work i'm interested in linux because of the the political and philosophical side of things less so the technical i like having more control over my machine than other distribute uh, than other operating systems but at the end of the day uh i don't have that same like urge for control that i used to have that that same like inquisitive nature of stuff like like i i i I much have moved over into the, the, the free software politics of it all, uh, which is fine. You know, like there are all kinds of people in the in the Linux community and and, and the Linux community is better for it. Uh, my old friend Steve, uh, he doesn't necessarily care for the free software side of things at all. He uses Linux because he believes or he he gets better results out of using Linux as an operating system. Um, and we have to, you know, and, and there are people that are going to, such as myself, or even less technical than myself, who come over to Linux, not because they are interested in the the hacking side of things but or the pragmatic you know usability side of things but simply because they want out of a corporate environment they want a little bit more autonomy over their devices um and you know like i use uh, for for work in particular i use i've got my samsung phone there uh, and i've given that over to the to the, the corporate gods basically it's like that's my little window into the corporate world if i need to install an app or i need to be in some kind of compatibility place with a with a corporation uh that one phone that i'll just turn off and stick in a drawer when i you know when i don't use it um that's fine that's fine you know like you know um yeah it, so that's sort of where i am but like you know i in all honesty the android operating system isn't that bad like it's, it's actually pretty good i suppose you could call it linux you could say it's linux based you could say that linux um has has dominated the the, the phone world and, and and that would be true and that's actually kind of interesting as well like this is really turning on to a bit turning into a bit of a ramble now but i've always thought like be careful what what we wish for when we want linux to become a dominant operating system if indeed we do i think most people nowadays i talk to are quite fine with linux being linux at this point anyone as long as anyone who wants to to become part of the community is able to that's all we need like we've got our we've got our lot we've got we've got it pretty good uh, we can certainly run thousands upon thousands of games we can run the applications many applications of course of which uh just work through browsers now anyway which i, th I think is fine um so there we go. It's easier, in my experience, it's easier to back up a server than it is to back up a desktop machine, especially if you're working on several desktop machines. Like, for example, I've got a, a work uh, computer, I've got a home computer, I've got a home laptop, and I've got, uh, you know, I've got my work phone, and I've got a personal phone. So all of those devices, is it easier to back up all of those devices or is it easier to sign into the cloud? You know, it, it kind of makes sense at that point. And then, you know, so if any of these machines go down or get broken or need to be replaced, I can do that. Don't lose anything because a lot, even myself, a lot of stuff now goes directly up into the cloud, backed up in, in, in real time. Um, again, yeah, I know there are privacy uh, reasons behind that. Um, but at, at the end of the day, um, time is the reason, you know, like it, it's time, it's convenience. And, um, you know, I, I, I go on board knowing that.
Um, there are ways that I can I, I can make stuff more private, uh, but in a lot of cases, the vast majority of stuff I do is either for YouTube or it's for work. And I work in in a very public, you know, I work for a newspaper, so uh, a lot of what I do, for the most part, is out there. It is in the open, and there is even a you know a, a, a degree of transparency. Is you know, and that's not really applicable, but um, in terms of transparency and all. But like yeah, like um, in all reality. Um, yeah and also by the way as well like even like engaging with the world wide web you know like using linux or not using google and, and stuff like that like there are so many ways that it gets back to google i remember there were or like gets back to the big corporations um there have been people i've known who have bought stuff from like little indie shops on online they go okay don't want to buy from amazon i'm going to go and buy from like li some little corn like not corner shop online but like you know a little like independent store online uh, and they've ordered from that store okay it's a little bit more expensive than amazon but you know you're supporting a small business and what comes through the mail when they've ordered from it all in amazon packaging they've just they've just drop shipped it from amazon it's like at, at the end of the, at the end of the day um you know systemic change is, is what's needed and and in a lot of cases like um you know it, our power comes from our community not our, our individual choices so um anyway what a heck you know that's that's one heck of a ramble isn't it um, and it's good to be back, so I do apologize for perhaps the disjointed nature of this video, but that's why I think Linux Mint is the best distribution to onboard new for, for new users, and um, and that's not necessarily going to apply for all users all the time. Fundamentally, at the end of the day, your distribution, the only thing that really matters is like how fast it moves. You've got Debian that moves slow, you've got Arch that moves fast. If you want something low maintenance, but maybe doesn't have the newest packages, choose Debian. If you want something that does have the newest packages, but may require a little bit of calibration, a little bit of staying awake, a little bit of making sure your machine's updated on time and all that kind of stuff, choose Arch. I have a number of devices and as such, having Arch on all of them would be quite high maintenance. Debian is just a lovely low maintenance distribution and uh, I've said to myself, I'm still running Linux Mint Debian Edition on this machine right here. I've always said, the second I can't do a job that, that newer packages or a newer distribution can do, I'll switch it out. I swear, I mean it one of these days. Um, will I use, uh, you know, maybe maybe I'm waiting for Linux Mint Debian Edition, the next one? Is that four or something? I can't remember now. Uh, or, or maybe I'll just use Linux Mint uh, uh, Ubuntu-based. Who knows? Uh, I have in the past... Um, advocated that Linux Mint Debian Edition really should be Linux Mint's flagship distribution. There's a part of me that still very much believes that, but at the end of the day, Ubuntu and Canonical have put together one heck of a Linux distribution. Like, Ubuntu, on a pragmatic technical level, really good. And Linux Mint borrows from that, takes from that, and... Uh, they win with it as well, in my opinion. That's not to say, you know, if you find yourself on PopOS, PopOS is a fine distribution. It's backed by a company, but it's not backed by a company that desires to, you know, dominate its space. Uh, and it's a company that, that give back to Linux as well. I know that a lot of people with newer graphics cards tend to prefer uh, PopOS. Uh, people with NVIDIA graphics cards often will opt for, for PopOS. Truth be told, though, I'm not the biggest fan of the GNOME desktop environment, and I believe PopOS only has the GNOME desktop environment. Um, I think I, I like that Pop OS have actually just just um, come out and said come out with only one desktop environment though. I do respect that. Uh, I I think as I get a little bit older, I'm I'm more comfortable with like okay, have a distribution that releases one desktop environment, um, and then like if you don't like it, load on your own. That that you know that tends to be where I lean nowadays. Um, but uh, I like how Debian do it as well. As, uh, but Debian's a much bigger operation, so. Um, yeah, and as always, there's never really one, you know, like, best way to do things anyway. Um, but, like, with something like Linux Mint or, or Pop! OS, I, you know, like, Linux Mint defaults to, to Cinnamon, and it'd be fine if, if, like, Linux Mint Debian Edition only has Cinnamon. If I wanted XFCE, it'd be no problem at all just to load it on um, and, and, and set it up. Um, so, yeah, if, you yeah. know. Such is life. So, anyway, thank you very much for joining me. It's a pleasure as always. I'm sure I will have lots of contr contributions in the comments section down below. Um, but yeah, and also, like, bear in mind, you know, when if you are helping someone come onto the in come into the Linux world, um, you know, think about why they're joining Linux. Why why they 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 become part of the community? Do they want to become a more technical user, or do they just want to get away from a corporate environment? Because you know the distribution may be different as a result of that. On the whole, though, yeah, like Linux distributions, 
at the end of the day don't matter because for most parts you can do one thing you can do you know take a task the chances are you can do it on any given linux distribution the methodology might change slightly or you might be doing it on slightly newer versions of, of software and all that kind of stuff or older um but yeah at the end of the day i you know as long as you pick something that's still maintained generally has a bit of a community behind it i think you're golden for the most part and um uh yeah plenty of opportunities to to learn there but if i were to pick one yeah linux mint uh all, all the way not only because of my personal history with it but also because i have had a lot of success on boarding new people so uh thank you very much for that i want to just pick up on a point that i remember that i sort of trailed off on which was of course uh when i said that android was a very good operating system and um that when we you know we should be careful what we wish for when we say we want as many users on linux as possible that's certainly not really what we want because if linux were to become mainstream i mean there is a mainstream distribution of linux and it's called chrome os believe it or not it's based on gen 2 so you know it's real linux there um oh by the way don't 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 bring people on and put them onto gen 2 i think that goes without saying but yeah gen 2 is not for people new to linux just just putting that out there but yeah no but um chrome os is and if you want to look at what linux might look like if it were to go mainstream, it would it would be Chrome OS. That's the thing. So, not every f just because some just because it's Linux doesn't automatically necessarily make it great. I've never used Chrome OS, so I'm not trashing it. But it is, of course, super cloud centric, as I understand it, and of course, it is Google's operating system as well. And I think that it's going to grow. I think that it's going to be absolutely massive in the future because of things like Google Classroom. A lot of kids are just being brought up on Google products now. Uh, you know, when you've got Android at home, Google Classroom in, in the classroom. Um, people are just going to grow up in the Google world. And, um, you know, it used to be Microsoft. Microsoft used to play this game. Uh, they gave Windows 95 to all schools for free, as I understand it. And, um, you know, that, that put a solid foothold for a generation. Um, and now it's, now it's Google's turn. And, you know, I wonder who's going to take over from Google. You know, as much as I hate Google, I, I, I hate it on a systemic level. But, like, undeniably, in many ways, it's a it's a good company it's also a bad company in many other ways like you know all the weapons of war and stuff that they make that's not google necessarily but more alphabet but like yeah like deserves i'm not i'm not necessarily or you know like it's, it's it's a complicated situation right google drive is great you know like it's a, it is a really useful set of tools when i'm coordinating volunteer projects with people having a checklist of to-do items and being able to like just see them get ticked off as people go through them together is, is is really useful like that's undeniably really good and because most people have a google account most people can just like log in it's just a piece of cake it is centralized it's corporate it takes away user control it doesn't stop it being crazy useful sometimes it's painful i know and it's horrible i know um but we can we can carve out our little enclaves we can have our little victories we could have you know our little our, 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 our places where where we still have control and we can uh, enjoy them as as you know, for what they are, when they are. Um, but uh, but there we go. Um, but yeah, I mean, the world's going to move in the direction that it moves. Uh, us as Linux users, us as a lobbying group, or as a base, as a community, uh, you know, we, we, we're going to have to adapt to a changing world in it. So anyway, um, Thank you very much for joining me. A pleasure as always. And I will catch you later. Or, oh no, hang on a minute. I've got a catchphrase, haven't I? Uh, I've been Chris Ware. You've been awesome. And uh, toodaloo.